Are you someone who is confused between choosing between the old tax regime and the new tax regime? Are you confused whether you should claim the ATC deduction or the ATD deduction? Or should you do both? Or is it better to just go for the new tax regime? Join us on this exciting Instagram session where we talk about the intricacies of tax planning and what you should be doing better. Making sense of the stress test. We have seen a circular from the AMFI, which is the SRO that governs the mutual fund space to all the AMCs. The circular asks the trustees of the AMCs to satisfy themselves by conducting a stress test in small caps and in mid caps. Before I go into the actual stress test, I would like to talk a little bit about the need for one. Why did this happen? I think that the competitiveness to show better returns has led to the very process of investing getting gamed. This probably started in the hands of some individual investors a few decades ago. But over this period of time, the gaming of returns has more or less become institutionalized. How? When I came to the market, people would want to find a great company. And if you found that great company, you are fairly confident that that company would do the rest for you in your portfolio. You were not trying to find any method that was necessary other than identifying great companies, investing in them and waiting for long periods of time. But as the institutional participation in Indian equities grew, we started having very intense competition and comparison between these institutional players, predominantly mutual funds. So everybody has a product in every theme or in every segment of the market. Everybody wants to lead in that segment or at least be in the top quartile. Everybody has to beat the benchmark. So if you do not beat the benchmark, it would be taken as professional incompetence. Probably people may even lose jobs, heads may roll. So in a kind of a self-preservation mode, we started seeing the system being gradually gamed. Let me explain how. Investors did not just see what are the good companies. They started seeing which are the companies in which there is very low floating stock. So they gravitated towards buying businesses with low floating stock. Mutual funds prefer to buy a company with low floating stock over a company which has high floating stock if all other parameters are equal. So the tilting factor would be the floating stock. The calculation was that we can anyway buy quite a bit of that floating stock and thereafter there would be nobody to sell. So even if the market falls on a particular day, if somebody buys a few thousand shares, it could be their broker or somebody else, the NAV can be always stable. Effectively, people felt confident that the NAV of their mutual fund scheme would be less volatile if they bought more illiquid stocks. What started as a random thing slowly started spreading and I think today it is almost institutionalized. I think everybody in the system kind of is well aware of this. It is not as if nobody knows. So this advocacy of a stress test wherever it started is something that is probably a little behind time. Why do I say that? See when you blow the whistle in trends like this, it is better to blow it a little early than to blow it a little too late. That is the problem because the velocity of the capital that got into these spaces 
has increased tremendously. Today, you know, the size of the SIP book is the highest in this space even today. So, how would you control that? Now, would you ask everyone to stop doing a SIP? You can't, right? So, things have gone beyond uh, what is acceptable. And even now, the advisory does not actually explicitly ask anyone to cool down this space. No one is doing that. So, what the advisory says is, people must satisfy themselves that if in an event shares have to be sold, then they should be liquid enough. I mean, even without doing that, you can be satisfied that number of these shares are not liquid. I mean, you do not need to do the stress test. So, if there is a redemption pressure, then it is going to be a crisis. I mean, you do not need to be a rocket scientist to say that, but it is a subtle way of asking people to take better care of their fiduciary duties. That is all there is to it. I know a lot of people will be very angry watching this video. But truth should not make us angry, it should make us reflective and introspective. Because whether it is your own money or somebody else's money, you should be responsible enough in how much you allow fraud to build up in a space and it is an individual responsibility, it is a collective responsibility of all major stakeholders. I would not externalize that as the role of any one entity, certainly not just the regulator. It is like saying that a policeman alone is responsible for law and order in a society, then what is the role of the citizens? That is a very unfair way of looking at the situation. So, I think that we have done this in a way which is very, very wrong because I think when it started, nobody expected the SIP book to go into thousands of clothes. Nobody thought that uh, the SIP and the lump sum would take small cap funds to the size that we see today. And nobody thought that the investment pyramid which was like this would get inverted with small cap at the top and large cap not finding favor. So, multiple factors have created this situation, but in my assessment, there is no easy way out from here. This stress test, first of its kind, would still be somewhat rudimentary and not adequate to address the issues comprehensively. That is my personal sense. As somebody who has analyzed uh, mutual funds for over two decades very closely and who has seen the small cap space very, very closely in the mutual funds for the last 15 years, I do not think this can be solved so easily because investors have to take the step back. Investors have to seek caution. And when will they seek caution? That is again a difficult question because I am seeing a lot of influencers. You know, these guys are jokers in the pack. They come out and say that, uh, you know, uh, if you invest for 20 years, you will do this compounding based on the past record. Now, what is going to be the growth rate of the economy in the next 20 years? What are the entry valuations today? From this, if valuations moderate over the next 20 years, what will be the trajectory? How much lower will valuations moderate to. So, even if there is growth, what will be the valuation of businesses after each milestone? Let us say 5, 10, 15, 20. Nobody is looking any of these things closely or logically. Just go and do these back testing and come and tell people in social media using these data. It is not even data actually. Just past back testing records, which has no relevance to the future. Using these people are being told that if you do for 20 years, you can do SIP even now, you can do it forever, you can do it as long as you wish at whatever valuation. Now, all these wild advisories are basically giving people very elevated levels of confidence. Now, I do not see how these people can be silenced because they are the root cause for a lot of the confidence which is misplaced but yet there. When you have so much of misplaced confidence, who will place the confidence in the right place or move it to a better place? Nobody can do it. This video may have so many facts, but how many people will see it? A few hundred. So, no one is really going to take this to the masses. No one is going to make that retail guy understand that uh, just blindly saying it is a 20 year game is not a success mantra. 
because the valuations have gone beyond what they should become. So effectively, this stress test is like a thermometer which is first put in the mouth of a patient or a person who feels little uncomfortable and who is a little warm. Because that person is warm, it does not mean that uh, it is just fever. The symptoms could be there, but it could be something much bigger. Time will only tell us how we are going to deal with these symptoms, what kind of further tests, investigations and what kind of studies have to be done so that we make that space healthier, the patient should become healthier. But until then, we will need this stress test and much more because internally, we need to change the way we think about how to generate returns for investors. Unless the fiduciary soul changes, overvaluation will always become normalized because overvaluation helps you in asset gathering and the best asset gathering happens in times of extreme overvaluation and nobody wants to walk away from that party where you can gather as much assets as you want. That is a stress test on the investor, but the investor wants that test and he wants to participate in the test. He does not want to take any learnings from the test. All he wants to be is in the hunt. That essentially is the story of the stress test and the story of why it came, how it came, what it can turn into and where our expectations must trend towards. Thank you for watching this video.